Hill, it's Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. Thanks so much for stopping by. We hope you'll come back often and that you'll subscribe by hitting that little button below. Now, let's craft y'all. Today's video is part of the Thrift Flip Road Trip Challenge playlist. We will be talking about that a little more in just a bit. For now, let's get started. y'all this is Kay. For this project I'm going to be using this little gift box that I rescued from the trash. I'm going to turn it from trash to treasure for something for my bathroom. I got this little crystal knob at the Dollar Tree. Can you believe that? I paid $1.25 for it. I was so excited to find it. Unfortunately they only had one but I'm excited to use it in this project. I'm going to be using one of these napkins that I got in a pack at TJ Maxx. When you open them up, there is four on one napkin, and I will be using all four for this project. I'm also going to be using some scrapbook paper for this project. This is a leftover piece. It came from Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to be using one sheet from this collection, Lost and Found Market Street. It was very inexpensive because I got it at Tuesday morning. I'm going to use some white Waverly chalk paint in the color Ivory, my Distress Oxide ink pad, and finally some Mod Podge. The first thing I'm going to do is give my box a really good sanding. I sanded for quite a while on this glitter. You can't get it all off, but you will get most of it off. And then I want to sand the outside of the box as well. Once that was done, I wiped down my box and then I'm going in and I'm going to paint it with my ivory chalk paint by Waverly and it took two really good thick coats, y'all. I cut two two-inch strips of my scrapbook paper in the striped because one strip of 12 inches will not go all the way around and then I tape them together in the middle. Now I'm going in and I'm going to draw a line five-eighths of an inch from the edge so I know where to turn it under. I'm going to take my Mod Podge and then I'm going to roll my lid along this line, making sure that the 5 8 inch side is the one I'm going to turn up under my lid once I work my way all the way around the lid. Now I've gotten to the end, I'm going to cut off that excess right along this line, make sure it's sealed really well, let it dry for just a bit, and then I'm going to come in and make some cut marks right at the top of the lid. I'm going to cut in the middle of all the white stripes all the way around the lid. And now I'm just using Mod Podge, and I'm going to turn those pieces down onto the top of the lid. I am working on the top at this time. Once that dries down a little bit, I'm going to go in and start working on the inside edge. I'm going to cut once again, in the middle of the white, but you don't want to cut all the way to the lid, by the way. You want to leave just a little bit for rolling it over the edge, and then you use your Mod Podge going around and making sure that everything is glued down nicely. You want it as flat as possible so that your lid will fit back on your box. And then I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge on top of that as well, just to make sure everything's nice and flat. Now for my napkin. When you open it up, of course, you have four on one napkin. Then I went in with my really small detail scissors, and I'm going to fussy cut around all four of my pieces. Make sure that it is one ply, and then I'm going to start placing them down on my box. I'm going to put one in the middle of the front, then I'll put the second one exactly in the middle of the back, and then for the third and fourth one, I'm going to use Mod Podge, of course, and center them between the two I've already placed on. I am leaving the leaves hanging off and then I'll just trim that up once everything is dry. I'm going to give a coat of Mod Podge on the outside of my lid here. Now that my roses are dry, I'm going to go in with a top coat and I'm just going to work my way kind of from the inside of the rose out, if that makes any sense with my strokes. And I want to cover the entire box so that it's nice and sealed. I'm taking my lid and I'm going to Draw the top part of the lid a circle onto the scrapbook paper that I showed you earlier. We cut that out, 
use some more Mod Podge and we're just going to attach it right down to the top of my box and I just put my Mod Podge on top of it so it was heavy and helped it dry flat. Now I'm using my distressing ink and I'm just going to distress all the edges and I finally started just using my finger in my ink and I distressed all of the roses as well just to give it more of an antique look. And I want to distress this lid and knock down that white so it's a little more off-white. And I just use my finger and distress it and it did come out an off-white. Now I'm going to take my Cricut tool and I'm just, or pokey tool, and make a hole right in the top of my box lid. And then I'm going to place on my knob. I'll use the little washer and nut that came with it and we'll just tighten that down nicely onto our lid. And with that, it's almost complete. Let's place the lid back on. And there it is. I'm going to keep cotton balls in mind. If you had one, what would you keep in it? Hey y'all, it's Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. We are so excited to be launching our new monthly challenge, the Thrift Flip Road Trip with our friend Teresa from Our Green Acres. Each month, we will be challenging other channels to repurpose old thrifted items in their projects. You can get these thrifted items from a store, the roadside, or just something you already own that needs freshening up and updating. We will have a link to the playlist in the description box below. When you finish our video, go over and check out all of the other amazing creators and their projects. Don't forget to check out Teresa's channel either. She is the queen of all things shabby chic and we know you are going to love her just as much as we do. If you are new and coming over from the playlist, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We release new videos each week. We're sure you can find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this stop in the Thrift Flip Road Trip, you're going to be joining me at Lake Harding, which is in beautiful Hamilton, Georgia. For today's projects, I didn't actually go to the thrift store. I'm going to be using two of these gorgeous cheese boxes that were gifted to me by my sister. I fell in love with the wood on these when I first saw them, and I can't wait to show you what I did with them. So let's get started. For this project, we're going to use the bottom half of one of our cheese boxes. I love these cheese boxes. I love the color that's on them, how they looked almost like they've been torched. I realize that this one isn't perfectly round because of this size, but I think it's going to work out perfectly for the project that I have in mind. A piece of plywood, I will cut it down to fit inside my box, which is 14 inches wide and four inches deep. Some wood glue, a D-ring hanger I got from Walmart, a piece of an old paint stirrer stick from another project, a propane torch. Now I know this is gonna be a little scary, but hang in there with me. I'm gonna show you that with a little care, you can use this for a gorgeous effect a salt shaker from the thrift store, some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, and some lace from Hobby Lobby, this gorgeous pick that I got from Walmart for 97 cent, some marbles that I got from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. Y'all, I fell in love with these cheese boxes the minute my sister showed them to me. And I knew that I wanted to use one to make a shelf to go in my bathroom to hold like washcloths for people who come. So I needed to measure the inside and I found out that it was 14 inches. This is, tells me how long I need to cut my piece of plywood. And I love how it looks like it's been torched on the outside. The coloring on this is gorgeous, but my plywood didn't look like that. So we're going to take our propane torch and we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna show you an easy technique to give you a gorgeous piece of wood. Now I know that this propane torch can be intimidating, but don't let it get the best of you. As long as you use your head and you're really careful, this works 
beautifully. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you hold it in your hand like I'm doing, but I was recording and that's why I did it. And I was super careful so I didn't burn myself. But normally I lay this on like the concrete or something like that before I burn it. I did this on all kinds of projects that I sold and that always went over well. Now that we have our wood ready, we're going to fit it into our little cheese box there and you see that it is a perfect fit it fits really tightly and that's why I chose not to put any nails in the end I'm just going to use some wood glue I put a generous amount on both ends and then we'll stick it back down into our cheese box and we're going to pull it down until it's tight in there and then let our wood glue set up to put a hanger on this, I found my center and I was afraid that my screw was going to go all the way through because it was a little longer than my wood was. So my solution for that was I took a piece of a paint stir stick I had left from another project and I used some wood glue and hot glue and attached it to the back of my box. Now I'll use my awl and I'm going to make a hole right where my... Um, hanger's going to go. This is just kind of like a starter hole and it did split my wood when I pushed it through there but that's okay. I went ahead and screwed the screw down in there and the glue helped it hold in place and it gave me what I needed to keep the screw from going all the way through. Now our shelf is completely ready, but I wanted to make a cute little decorative piece to sit on the shelf. I'm going to use it to hold washcloths in the restroom, but I also wanted it to be kind of a piece of decor. So I grabbed this salt shaker that I'd gotten from the thrift store, and I'm going to glue a piece of that lace around it. Then I'm going to take a piece of that burlap ribbon, and I'm going to glue it right on top of it. And y'all, that's it. I think this turned out so stinking cute. I'll take some of those marbles that I get from the Dollar Tree and put in there. This is just going to help hide the stems from my floral piece. And then I'm going to take my pick and I like to cut those pieces apart and just stick them down in there. And once you get this in there, this project is finished. For this project, we're going to use the lid off of the cheese box that we use for our shelf, some Waverly chalk paint in white, these Roman numerals that I cut out using my Cricut. Now, I did use my cutting machine for this, but you can get these stick-on numbers at any craft store, or you could do this freehand, and I think that it would turn out looking amazing, especially for the farmhouse style one of these clock kits that I got from Amazon. You can get these at craft stores and at Walmart, but it was actually cheaper to get it on Amazon since it had the longer hands. So y'all, I went back and forth on whether to paint this or not. I absolutely love the wood on this cheese box, but in the end, I am making this for my son and my daughter-in-law and they love that farmhouse style. So I decided to paint it. I grabbed my chippy brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and I just went around and painted the top and the sides with a heavy hand and let it dry. But now you don't have to do this. You could leave it just plain wood. Once our paint is dry, I needed to make a hole right in the center of my lid to be able to put my clock motor through. I took my awl and I was able to get a good hole there. It just wasn't big enough. So I grabbed my drill and I opened it up and now my motor fits through there perfectly. Before we add our clock pieces though, I need to add my numbers. Now I'm just using some transfer tape. You put you know, it over the numbers and then you use your scraper and burnish it down and peel the back off of it. And you can just lay it on top of your project 
burnish it again and it sticks perfectly. Now this was really large. I had to do it 15 inches so that it would fit around the perimeter of my lid. So I couldn't cut it as one piece. I had to break it down and cut it as four pieces, but I think it turned out perfect just like it was. Now, as I said before, if you don't have a cutting machine, you can get these numbers at the craft store. You can get them off of Amazon, but I think this would be absolutely gorgeous to use one of the methods y'all seen us use for transferring numbers or letters onto your projects and just do this by hand. Since this is a farmhouse look, I think that would even give it a more authentic look to it. But since I was doing this as a gift, I did decide to cut out my numbers and use it this way. Now, once we put this last section of our numbers on there, we will be able to move on and insert our clock pieces into this. To put this clock together is really simple. On the back of the package that it comes in, it shows you exactly how to do it and it's so easy. You're gonna put your rubber washer on top of your motor and stick it up through your hole. Then you put your other little flat washer on top of that. You're gonna take your hands and line them up so that they sit perfectly on there. Then use the small washer to go on top of that. And then there's a little piece that pops in and that's all there is to this. Now for mine, I chose not to add a hanger because it has this really big lip on the back of this lid, but you could add a hanger if you want to. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. For this project, we're going to use another one of our cheese boxes. This time we'll be using the whole thing. We're also going to use a piece of this Buffalo Check wrapping paper from Hobby Lobby, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some 3M Super 77 adhesive spray. If you don't have this, you could also use Mod Podge, some ink and a dauber, some Mod Podge, some wood screws, and the legs from this stool that I got from Goodwill for $5.99. I wanted some table legs, but y'all, they are outrageous right now. So I went to the thrift store and I looked around at things that I could use in place of table legs. I wanted to show you that with a little bit of thought, you can use almost anything to create your project. So I went back and forth on this one, just like I did with the clock, on whether I wanted to leave it this gorgeous wood or if I wanted to give it some kind of element to it. I finally decided to judge up the top of this. And since the legs on this are gonna be black, I wanted to use something that would kind of tie it in together. So I grabbed this wrapping paper that I had gotten from Hobby Lobby. I traced my lid out on it and cut it out. Then I lay my paper on top of my lid and I'm just going to go around with my Zacto knife and trim it up using that seam that's there to make it fit perfectly. Now this was a little time consuming, but it worked. I don't like to have those cut edges on my projects, so I grabbed my black ink and my finger dauber and I'm just gonna kinda go around the edge of this and distress it. This is going to make it blend in better once we put it together. Now we're just gonna put it back on top of our lid and then I'm going to use my 3M Super Adhesive Spray and I'm gonna give this a really good coat and press my paper down onto it, rubbing out those wrinkles and bubbles. Now you can use Mod Podge for this, but this dries so much better. Once I get it down, I am going to add some Mod Podge to the top of this. I didn't like how shiny it was, so I did use matte Mod Podge, and then I spread it out with my brush and let it dry. 
I really did love how this wood looked and I love the shiplap look to it. So I ended up grabbing my Zacto knife and my fingernails and I opened up all of those little strips across there to kind of make this look more authentic and more rustic looking. It wasn't hard to open these up and I was really pleased with how it looked once I did get them open. Now y'all know I can't leave anything alone so I had to grab my marker and go through this and just kind of give those edges some definition and blend them in and then I took a piece of sandpaper and went all around this and just really distressed all the edges of this. I went over the top of it and took down some of the shine from it and I was pleased with how it looked. Now for the band on this, I ended up using my Waverly chalk paint in ink and my chippy brush and I gave this a really good coat and I left it to dry. I think this black band on this is really going to bring those legs into the rest of this. Now, I want to use these legs and I was recruiting my husband to help me get them off of this and he pointed out to me that this has a solid base to it which could give my project a lot more stability. So I removed this faux leather the best that I could and then he took an Allen wrench and he took the legs off for me. Now I didn't get a video of him taking them off but all he did was use the allen wrench and loosen those screws on it and now i can remove the foam that's on here and go ahead and get that backing off there as well and it had like 500 staples in it so we're going to remove those too now getting those staples out chewed up my back pretty good so i used my sanding block and smoothed that out and then i'm just going to use my waverly chalk paint in ink and i'm going to paint the back of this and the sides of it and i'm going to leave it to dry i didn't worry about the top because that's going to be covered and you won't see it now that our paint is dry, we will put this back together. I'm just going to sit my legs back on top of this and center them up over those screw shafts that are in there. And then I add my screws back in and I take my Allen wrench and tighten it up. I'm going to take my cheese box and I sit it up here upside down and I'm going to put my base on top of it and I'm going to mark where each one of those legs are. That way I don't drill into one of my legs. Then we're just going to trace around this so I know where it needs to sit and I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to drill a starter hole in between each one of those marks that I made where the legs were. Now I'll just take my screws and I'm going to go ahead and put those in so I know where they need to go. Now all we have to do is attach our cheese box to the bottom. I centered it up on there and then I'm going to use my drill screwdriver bit and I'm just going to put my screws down in there and then we'll add our top to it and this project will be finished. so much for joining us today. Please don't forget to click on the link in the description box below and go check out the Thrift Flip Road Trip Challenge playlist to get lots more upcycling inspiration. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!